Hey soldiers, the United States of America, we can't even get our phone calls returned from Beijing. This is another example of the loss of prestige, the loss of reputation, the diminished stature we have in the world today because of just repeated missteps on the world stage. And then when you look at America and what we are doing here in this country today, we are proving to the world that we are not serious about playing on the global chessboard. All right. Now, I think some of the things that I'm referring to going on here in this country, you know very well what I'm talking about. I'll just put it this way. America is confused about basic biology. All right. And we're having all types of uh, back and forth and strenuous debates on that. Meanwhile, China is ignoring Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin. Just not taking their phone calls. We're going to get into that. Go ahead, hit subscribe. We're going to look deeper into the diminished capacity of our international reputation, how that is a result of all of these countries questioning our, you know, financial status, looking at what we, you know, put emphasis on as a country and saying these guys are a joke. Let's diversify and work with serious people. So much so that the president of France, I believe they call him the president. We've got uh, subscribers in France. So you guys tell me if I'm right about that. I believe it's the president. He has left his country, gone to Beijing to meet with Xi to petition the Chinese to intervene in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. He didn't come to Washington, D.C., okay? He has flown over to, to uh, Beijing instead, okay? from Paris to Beijing, to talk to none other than Xi. Why would he come here? Macron, the president of France, he watched the program where, you know, uh, an attack, a vicious and very sad in incident had happened in America at a Christian school. And he watched as Joe Biden came out and started talking about ice cream. Okay, and laughing, yucking it up. And he said, wait a minute, this is not a serious guy. You know, I better go. I, I'm not going west. I'm going east. Okay, charge up the plane. We're, we're headed east to talk to Xi, a serious player on this global chessboard. Now, we talked about law number five in the 48 Laws of Power. I recommend you read that book. We talked about law number five being guard your reputation, okay, with your life. Because once you lose it, you can't get it back. America is experiencing that, okay? Our policies... Uh, again, domestic and foreign, are coming home to roost. And it's uh, resulting in a loss of reputational value. Um, there are other laws at work here that the Chinese are using in their favor, okay? Uh, make other people come to you. That's law number eight in the 48 rules of, 48 laws rather, of power. Like I said, I want you to go ahead and hit subscribe, enlist, become a soldier of finance. All, all you got to do is hit that subscribe button. I want you to go ahead, give a thumbs up to this video. We're talking about serious subjects, okay, that are going to affect us. This is not meet the press, and this is not, you know, this week with so-and-so where the area dites and stiff shirts, I know, get on TV with their Harvard degrees. See, I didn't graduate from Harvard, so I can say that. Uh, and, you know, speak about things that are, you know, of chief concern inside the 495 Beltway. No, we here on Soldiers of Finance talk about what it means to us, the people that are out there making the world work. All right, so go ahead, hit subscribe, and please give it a thumbs up right now. Take you a millisecond. Once you hit subscribe, let me know in the comments, and I will salute you. Salute to all of the Soldiers of Finance. So, we're looking at uh, law number eight, make people, make other people come to you. My God in heaven, uh, China is doing that to a fair thee well. Uh, make your opponent come to you when you force others to act, you're in control, bait them, then attack. Uh, you got to get that book, guys, 48 Laws of Power. Listen, this is exactly what Xi has done. Xi has masterfully gotten inside of this conflict, okay? and said, I'm going to play the role opposite of uh, America. 
He said that there is some opportunity here. And America's, you know, talking their rhetoric, democracy. How much of that do we really practice, right? I know we're a republic. Uh, and he's got Macron, the uh, president again of France, uh, coming over to speak to him about peace. Let's go into a little bit of this. Uh, Z pledges active peace role after Macron urges him to bring Russia to its senses. French President Emmanuel Macron is currently in Beijing urging his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping to bring Russia to its senses over the war in Ukraine. The French leader has made it crystal clear that his purpose is to dissuade China from offering any level of support to Moscow, whether political, economic, or military. Quote, I know I can count on you. This is Macron talking. Quote, I know I can count on you to bring Russia to its senses and everybody to the negotiating table. Unquote. He didn't come to Joe Biden with this, all right? With good reason. I mean, come on, let's be real, right? Macron told Xi this during a bilateral meeting as part of Macron's three-day visit to China. A joint statement to follow emphasized China and France's, Xi's and Macron's, mutual call for peace talks, quote, as soon as possible, unquote as well as reaffirming opposition to nuclear weapons threats or use. Now look, again, France is the United States of the United States of America. It's our France is our oldest ally, okay? NATO uh, partner. Okay? Yeah, they're back in. France had uh, exited NATO at one point, but they're in they, they are a NATO partner. Um G7. Okay? And they are actively courting China because they see China as the real power broker in this situation. All right. The Chinese leader, Xi Jinping, then said in the following press uh, conference, uh, addressing journalists, when he went some way toward responding positively. He said that, quote, together with France, we appeal for restraint and reason in the conflict, adding that China was seeking a quick return to peace negotiations in the quest for a political settlement and the building of a European architecture that is balanced and lasting. The Chinese leader, flanked by Mr. Macron, uh, said that China appeals for the protection of civilians. Nuclear weapons was, must not be used and nuclear war must be avoided. So it's giving China this podium uh, to, you know, appear on the world stage as a leader. And look, apparently they are. You're not going to have Macron getting up, going to anyone who uh, is not a legitimate uh, potential power broker in this situation. And this is going to brand China. This is this won't be forgotten. This is going to brand China going forward as a serious player uh, in uh, global affairs from a diplomatic standpoint. Very, very powerful stuff. Um, let's see. So we've got that going on. The other thing we have going on, guys, is let's look at the flip side of things. Our Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, he called his counterpart over in China, try to set up a meeting with Xi, because you remember, he canceled his meeting when the balloon came over, okay? But here recently, he's tried to reschedule that. And um, they're not answering the phone for him. In fact, Xi is probably sitting there. He heard the phone ring out in the, you know, outer office, you know, where his receptionist and everybody sits. He's in the inner office. He hears that phone ring. And ring, ring. And then his secretary, Xi says, who is it? It's... Anthony Blinken. She says, who? Anthony Blinken, the Secretary of State from uh, America. Oh, I'm not here. Okay. Can't be right. They're going back. All right. That's what's happening right now. Okay. Because the Chinese, they know that at this point they hold the cards. Okay. So they are making, again, that eighth law of power, they are making America come to them. All right. Another adage is power doesn't travel, 
So that's why you saw Xi stand still and go and uh, Macron come over. And that is why you would see Blinken, if they answered the phone for him, go over to China, okay, to meet with his counterpart and with Xi at some point, maybe. Uh, Blinken can't reschedule trip to China after canceling over spy balloon. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken is looking to reschedule his trip to China that he canceled over the Chinese balloon that wound up floating over the United States. But Beijing is rebuffing the effort. The political reported, uh, the re political report rather, said China has effectively frozen high level contacts with U.S. officials. An unnamed U.S. official said that the Biden administration is also trying to schedule a call between President Biden and President Xi Jinping and send other high levels of uh, level officials to China, but isn't having any luck. OK, so even Biden is not having any success getting Xi on the phone. Now, of course, this is working out for China in two ways. Number one, it get again that eighth law of power, make them come to you. But it also is adding pressure because remember China is gearing up to do something in Taiwan. I think everybody understands that. And America keeps sending our dignitaries over there. And this is, you know, obviously not sitting well with China. Before the balloon incident, the US and China were making it a point to engage in high level discussions despite tensions. But since Blinken canceled his trip, the U.S. shot down the spy balloon, which ended up over U.S. territory due to unexpected weather. That's BS. Uh, it ended up over U.S. territory because it was maneuvered there. Okay, The U.S. has already come out and said the thing had a rudder and propellers and solar panels for energy. Okay, Get real. This wasn't the balloon that, remember the Wizard of Oz at the end, they got in the balloon and they flew off? It wasn't that. This was a sophisticated balloon. Um, all progress has been reversed of late. Um, this is interesting. After the U.S. shot down the balloon in February, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, sometimes Secretary of Defense, sometimes high-level board member with Raytheon, I'd love to take a look at Joe Biden's campaign uh, contributions. I'm sure Raytheon was high up there. Uh, and that helped Lloyd Austin get uh, the position he occupies today. And Raytheon has made a pretty penny off of this thing going on in Ukraine. Okay. They've made a pretty penny. So, you know, Lloyd Austin, he's one of these new generals. We don't have patents and... Uh, what's his name? MacArthur's and Benjamin, Colonel Benjamin O. Davis. We don't have uh, people like that, military officers like that anymore. We got politicians like Lloyd Austin. Anyway, Austin tried to contact his Chinese counterpart, Wei Fangi, who has since been replaced, but China declined to take Austin's call, and he hasn't had any luck since. So you got Blinken, Secretary of State, you got Austin, Secretary of Defense, and you got but, uh, Bush, um, what's his name? Biden. All three of them are being rebuffed. Okay, this is this is incredible. This is uh, really telling. Uh, the Chinese Defense Secretary Wei Fangi was replaced by Li Shengfu, a Chinese general who is under U.S. sanctions for being involved in China's purchase of Russian weapons. The sanctions make uh, U.S.-China military communication even more difficult, and the Biden administration has not signaled it will lift them. I wouldn't answer your damn call either. You got sanctions on me. What, what is there to talk about, okay? Uh, China is going... This is what a lot of people in America didn't understand about America first, okay? You've got to be out of your mind if you expect or if you desire a president, a prime minister a king, whatever you want to call it, queen, whatever, that head of state to put any other country and any other country's interest before their own, all right? So, you know, Donald Trump was vilified about America first, but now we see what Russia first looks like. We see what China first looks like. We're seeing what France 
first looks like. Brazil first looks like, okay? India first looks like, right? And we're getting to see what it looks like when we subordinate our interest, okay, to an oligarchy or to other countries, right? Doesn't really look good for us here lately, now does it? So yeah, uh, Li Shengfu is not picking up the phone. He is an actual general uh, over there in the Chinese People's uh, Liberation Army. And um, that ain't good, man. That that's just, Especially when we got these tensions growing in Taiwan. Uh, tensions between the U.S. and China soared even higher on Wednesday when House Speaker Kevin McCarthy hosted Taiwanese President Tsai Ing-wen in California. Now, um, he didn't go to Taiwan as Nancy Pelosi did. Their president, Taiwan's president, came here. Uh, Speaker McCarthy on meeting Taiwan President uh, Tsai Ing-wen said, McCarthy says, there is no place where China is going to tell me where I can go or who I can speak to. Well, it probably is at least one place, and that's China. Okay, certainly can't come into China, but I know what he means. We get it, right? China reportedly warned McCarthy and Tsai not to hold the meeting and is expected to respond with more military drills around Taiwan. So what do we have? Let's sum this up. All right, we got Taiwan in the balance. Taiwan is the major, the major, the preeminent semiconductor manufacturer in the world today. We wouldn't be able to have this conversation without a whole bunch of semiconductors in between, okay? The world's grinding to a halt after, with that. All right, we got from a uh, diplomacy standpoint, America, you've seen, France is more respected than us right now. And that's fine. France is, you know, I'm not in, that's not an indictment of France. That's an indictment of us. All right. We've lost our position. Everybody expects us to just, you know, make war. All right. And cooler heads are trying to prevail. All right. Get us out of this thing. Remember, our people have said this will go on as long as we want it to. As long as, long as until we defeat Putin. Putin. Okay. America always has to have a, have a villain. And um, that's not working out anymore, guys. We've run that course. We've done that. And uh, it's, a, it's a new day as far as the rest of the world seems to be concerned. I uh, am not naive, guys. I know that China is not uh, an honest broker, pure as wind-driven snow. I know Russia isn't. I know all of these countries are operating on their own interest. Okay? I understand that. Um, I also understand that countries are not honest brokers. And it's not just America. And I know that. All right. But one thing is for sure, we have lost our influence in this world today. And it's not coming back with this crowd we have in the executive branch right now. It's not going to happen. All right. So I don't care what party affiliation you have. Uh, I don't care what your ideology is. I don't care where you, what country you reside in. These are the facts. All right, guys, so look, I'll close it out by directing your attention to the plan to destroy the dollar, okay? That is in full swing. It's a video we recently did. Take a look at it, and guys, I look forward to talking to you soon.